Recently, the world's leading experts in network biology met in Denmark to discuss the exciting future of network medicine. The discussion took place at a large symposium hosted by DTU. More than a hundred scientists spent three days sharing their latest results on how network models can be applied to the study and targeting of complex diseases such as cancer and diabetes. Welcome to uh, Integrative Network Biology 2012. It's um, hopefully going to be a really exciting meeting. Historically, as you know, at least for cancer and probably for most other human diseases, they've always been thought of on the basis of genetics as one gene, one protein, one disease. But what we're beginning to understand now is that there's tremendous crosstalk between different proteins and different gene products and different signaling pathways. And that both studying single pathways as a way to understand disease or targeting single proteins as a way to cure disease is probably not nearly going to be as effective as thinking of disease as a collection of, of aberrant pathways and networks. We've heard many talks here at the, this meeting. Is that the, uh, the the goal is that eventually, when people go to the uh, the clinic and they, they are diagnosed with a specific disease, people will be able to tailor the very specific type of uh, of drugs. And that uh, I guess the the hope is that uh, the promise is that the uh, by doing this kind of systems biology uh, uh, research or approach to understanding disease, we might be able to tackle the uh, uh, try to customize the. Uh, uh, the different um, remedies to uh, try to identify the, the, the cocktail of drugs that people would have to take for, uh, uh, to, to cure a very specific disease. I think the DTU um, has been a, a true leader in network medicine and systems biology. The DTU has several strengths that are really quite unique. There's a tremendous strength here in computational biology. Um, Soren Brunak's work trying to now integrate electronic health records together with more traditional types of bioinformatics is likely to be revolutionary in its ability to impact directly on patient care. And the other thing that I, I think is really unique about the DTU is there seems to be almost a seamless integration of biological data, computation, and mathematical analysis, something that's rather difficult to find at a single institute or a single university at most other places. What we have learned the last three days is that uh, we have had some uh, already um, big success stories, but also that there's uh, a lot of complexity still left uh, to deal with, in particular in terms of tumor and, and cancer biology. Um, but we extremely, uh, it's very clear that the field is really focusing now and, and on collaborations and international collaborations, which uh, will also build bridges to uh, DTU, in particular with uh, institutes like Harvard and MIT. The DTU is very fortunate to have people uh, like Soren Brunak and Runa Linding who really think about these things in a way that's, that's very non-traditional. The way that they're looking at things and the way they're thinking of things is likely to have I implications that are going to go far beyond uh, just the DTU. I think that these people are going to shape the way the, the next generation of physicians and cancer biologists and perhaps physiology in general is approached. <laughs>